Dear Sirs, Greetings. April 3, 2008, became a haunting day for her, and terrible, stabbing pain struck her abdomen while doing household duties. She felt something relentless digging deep within her. She fell unconscious as the pain increased. The awakening was accompanied by a sterile aroma. She opened her eyes to the unfamiliarity of the bright hospital room as consciousness unfolded. Bleached linen surrounded her, giving her awakening a sterile look. The awakening saw a hospital bed cradling her figure as anesthetic released its grasp. Her spouse, a loyal sentinel, watched at her bedside with an unspoken symphony of concern. She found comfort in his presence despite her confusing awareness. Doctors delivered dire diagnoses like acute appendicitis. Her appendix, an apparently harmless object at the end of her complex intestinal tract, caused this catastrophic condition, which unfolded like a novella of pain within her. It betrayed her with infection or blockage, a hidden insurgent who tortured her. The dialogue created a vivid tapestry of urgency, illustrating her health's delicate balance. The doctor's professional cadence highlighted the coming danger, appendicitis rupture, a forerunner to a catastrophic event. She struggled with the difficult choice in the maze discussion corridors. Surgery was the solution, a terrifying but necessary journey to evict her evil spirit. Her mind swirled with worry at the medical procedure. Surgeons performed a precise ballet of scalpels and cleanliness. The surgeon, a master, made a precise abdominal incision to bring resolution. The nasty appendage that caused her pain was removed by an endoscopy. After surgery, she felt relief despite the anesthesia-induced fugue. Hearing the surgeon's positive refrain, successful extraction, total appendix excision. However, prolonged convalescence in the hospital's sterile embrace dampened the triumph. An unwanted invader, infection, entered the surgical site, shattering the fragile quiet. Through careful examination of removed fluids, staph bacteria revealed its malignancy, prompting another painful surgery. In the quiet of anesthesia, a ghostly witness to talks drifted. The medical team, who decided her fate, played a disturbing sonata of fear. Her beloved family, her two-year-old daughter, her father, her steadfast husband, dominated their whispered conversations. These thoughts culminated in a frightening crescendo in her slumber, upset her to the core. She emerged from anesthesia into the ICU's sterile embrace, its extreme care cocooning her fragile existence. Family members, with hopes and sorrow on their faces, surrounded her, their wordless supplications laced into their anxious gazes. Her attempts at reassurance were muffled by the intubation's restrictive embrace, leaving her voice a wisp in the silence. She wanted to calm their fears and reassure them of her tenacity and resurgence despite the dreadful situation. She triumphantly answered the doctor's health question. The doctor left the room to speak with her parents, letting her hear bits of their conversation. Her mother, clearly disturbed, asked the doctor for clarity about her health and next measures. Her spouse asked about her health, and the doctor stressed the risk of brain damage and discussed treatment alternatives. Due to bed shortages, her parents and husband unwillingly left the hospital. Despite a sore throat, she wanted to express her anguish. Using pen and paper, she wrote to the nurse. She complained to the nurse about her sore throat. Her nurse comforted her, noting that some discomfort was expected but that the tube could not be removed. Two hours later, something major happened. The first nurse announced her plan to pick up her kid from school followed by the second nurse's refreshment break. She sensed her breathing getting harder as sputum accumulated after the nurses left. The tube blockage prevented oxygen from reaching her lungs. Despite her efforts, she couldn't express her grief, feeling helpless. Minutes became excruciating hours. An alarm went off, and a swarm of physicians and nurses raced into her bed, screaming for expert help. She saw their frantic efforts but couldn't breathe. Doctors injected a fluid into the tube to unblock it. She stopped breathing, and her heart stopped. She felt divorced from her body then. She opened her eyes to find herself hung in a medical gown. 
Her anguish subsided as a medical team surrounded her. She suddenly felt a supernatural power pulling her up, inviting her away from this world. She resisted, afraid of leaving her family and body, and doubtful of her return. However, the pull persisted, and she unwillingly left. After leaving Earth, she went on an unbelievable journey. She saw joyful creatures playing around a large, bright tree, and their sounds resonated with her. Her quest continued, removing physical and emotional weight. She continued after meeting colorful, supernatural beings that welcomed her. She saw children with beautiful skin tones playing in fields and around a grand fountain as she approached a garden. She saw people of various ages talking and reading as she approached the area. In this place, she felt no pain. The woman, imprisoned between the ethereal and mortal realms, had intense earthy and otherworldly feelings. Her anxiety over her family's suffering gave way to faith that they would join her in transcendence. Moving forward, she saw a lively group of older folks cheerfully wandering a garden with blooming flowers by a tranquil river, admiring the distant brilliance that might hint to her final destination. Her adoration surged as the bright glow intensified as she approached. She was drawn to an ultimate sanctuary by the light. Its warmth and peace enveloped her as she approached, as if she had merged with it. This bright luminescence gave her an incredible sense of pure love and calm, releasing her soul and filled her with tremendous gratitude for the enigmatic force guiding her to this extraordinary experience. Her heart was flooded with love by a soft touch. A soothing voice told her to be calm despite her many inquiries, starting her journey home. Her quick return made her wonder if it was disproportionate to her magnificent experience. After regaining consciousness, she was confined to a hospital bed while physicians worked to revive her. In the backdrop, the enigmatic energy of love and peace lingered. A strong voice reminded her that her earthly duty was unfinished and countless lives depended on her. Despite her unwillingness to return to her corporeal form, an unknown force forced her back into her body, causing tremendous pain upon awakening amid medical treatment. Her heart stopped despite her cries, and a dedicated doctor revived her. She gradually recovered from her anger. She related her near-death experience to the doctor's statement of similar events, but she didn't believe. After this unusual event, she considered faith to understand the unexplained. Many emotions flooded her upon returning home. She struggled to describe her profound encounter, grateful to see her family. Her husband believed it was a surgical hallucination, but she strongly denied any hallucinatory or pharmacological explanation. Convinced that this life-changing experience would define her future, she was grateful for a second opportunity and determined to live a meaningful life.